Hi everyone, and welcome to Anna Dialogue, the dialogue on analog music reproduction. Today, we're going to talk about mono recordings, monaural records, monophonic audio reproduction. Let's take a look. Yes, mono. I bet a lot of you, as soon as they heard the term mono, said, oh god, ugh, bad, bad music, bad sound, bad quality. No, 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 stereo's good, stereo's better, we want stereo. Well, actually, maybe that's not, that's not the case. Uh, today, everything, uh, music, te music videos, television programs, um, everything that's on streaming, uh, anything that is digitally or analog uh, reproduced uh, and as an entertainment, music, um, movies, anything goes in a stereo format. Only uh, sometimes voices or other effects are recorded in mono just because they take less space and they're more easy to, um, to combine with the rest of the, of the other music or audio signals and then when you master them it's easier at that point. But that's just the only case why we're still using mono. Instead, mono has an excellent curriculum, an excellent resume, we could say. Yes, because um, according to a lot of people, actually, the monaural signal is much better, actually, than, than stereo. I'm not saying this is true. Uh, I don't, I don't want to get in this. Uh, I, I, I have certain ideas, but I'm not 100% sure. It's difficult to demonstrate something like that. It's it's just personal taste, I guess. Although we must say that um, a mono signal is is all there. Is the whole entire spectrum of the information is concentrated in one channel, and it's not breaking up or reconstructed somehow from our from our system in order to create that three D sound stage that stereo does. Which is it's an awesome effect. I mean. That, that's a good part of stereo, and uh, I'm, obviously it's it's something positive when we want to try to Im merge ourselves and imagine a, 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 shen a scenario where um, all the musicians or a concert, whatever it is, is in front of us. And stereo helps in this. But apart from that, uh, a mono signal properly set up um, for many decades was the top of the tops. So there, there must be some kind of reason. As I said, I don't want to go too much in depth in this. Uh, let's just say though, the, the, the core topic of this video is that we must remember that um, the majority of the, the golden age of classical music, of jazz, and fundamental rock and pop albums, or singles, or EPs, were mono. Are mono so I think this is important we have to remember our roots where music recorded music started it was all mono until the, the late 60s also in the early 70s I would say uh, in, in cinematography but also in, in music so this is a fundamental aspect that we must remember and what is the important part of this is that we must absolutely try to identify those albums, uh, those um, productions from the, uh, the, the mainly the, the first part of the past century of the 1900s, where uh, monaural, uh, mon where, where the recordings were mono, not stereo, which means one microphone per track, per um, music instrument, per voice, etc. Not a double uh, double situation, a double setup, which gives obviously the stereo effect. So we have a lot of important albums in all, the, in, all, in all typologies, which were recorded in mono and that today, unfortunately, due to the, the, the stereo trend, are presented constantly in a stereo version, which, which is purely artifact. I mean, it's, it's artificial, purely artificial. 
the, we keep on buying and reprinting something that is not correct, something that is completely fake. Um, when you have a mono record, record recording, in order to transform it in a stereo recording, you artificially have to uh, separate all the different channels if you have the session tapes. If you have the session tapes with different tracks, at that point you can start to put a little some instruments on the left, some other instruments on the right, with, with the voices over there, etc. etc. Otherwise, a lot of times we don't have that, we just have a master um, the master tape which is already combined and at that point you electronically have to divide the different instruments which obviously is gonna in in degrade completely the sound uh, hence uh, this is very good in the last years also thanks to the thanks to the revival of vinyl a lot of productions original mono productions are coming back but let's take a step backwards Let's just try to take a look at the first um, of, of a few recordings. Obviously, one of the first um, genre of music that got its stereo version was classical music, because people were a lot in classical in the, in the first part of the century, of the last century. So the first stereo recordings actually are classical. But along with those, there was I, I, again, in, uh, at least in, in the late until the late sixties, a lot of um, excellent recordings in mono, like for example, this Fifth Symphony of Schubert, or this um, record of Strauss, or this one of Rainer with the Chicago Symphony. These are just some examples. These are all monophonic, but not only classical music. Obviously, we have, I would say, the best section probably is jazz albums, where we have fantastic things like Lady Day, something like this, Lou Donaldson. A lot of records are all in mono, but this is an excellent album. Bud Powell, Hank Mobley, Miles Davis, it goes on and on, the list goes on and on. But not only jazz, not only classic, also excellent and very famous rock pop albums, like for example, Beach Boys, Pet Sounds. This is a fantastic edition, which in fact has both the stereo and mono program, which in fact says original mono program and the stereo program, which is artificially created. The same for a fantastic album of uh, Jimi Hendrix, Acts as Bold as Love. As you can see here, mono. This was originally recorded in mono. And we constantly find in, the, in, in CDs and things like that, the stereo version, which is, it's a, it's a fake. I would say it's almost a hoax. So let's start going back and try to buy the original typologies of, of records. So, just to give you the last good examples, um, explaining where the market is going and how important this aspect is for audiophiles, but not only for audiophiles, since the, the, the actual quality of the monophonic record is superior, because that was the original format in which it was recorded. Two famous examples I want to show you here. Two big babies here. Oh yes, the Beatles and mono. Only the last two albums of the Beatles were in stereo. All the others were in mono. And as John Lennon said, you never heard Sgt. Pepper if you hadn't heard it in mono. His words, and the same for the other albums. These are much, much better. And you also have these in CDs. If you can see them up here, this is a, the, the CD version mono of this, of this baby. And recently, another good example, comes from this. The Rolling Stones in mono. This is another fantastic production, which recently came out. And as you can see, a good number of the first albums of Rolling Stone were in mono. And these sound incredible. Also Michael Fremer, a guru of audiophile, um, of anything that regards the audiophile world and hi-fi reproduction, was astonished. He has the best 
he has the original versions of all these albums and he said these are better. So what are we talking about? Not only we're going back, we're getting back these important records in mono, but to, with the technology of today and obviously the, the correct settings of the master tapes, we have excellent products and we have to look for these. Absolutely. So the next question is how do we reproduce these? How can we achieve this in our homes? Well, actually it's not that simple, I must admit that. Because we need, we should use a monophonic lineup, a monophonic system, which means a mono cartridge if we're talking about records, a mono preamp if it has a switch stereo mono, uh, the final receiver should also be in mono, and you should also have just one loudspeaker. To, to reproduce the monophonic signal. Almost anybody has that. I mean, you need a double system practically. What can we do to um, enjoy mono records and have an excellent reproduction with just a few um, tips I would like to give you? Well, we have a few, a few kinds of solutions. Um, I think we, you can just remain with two loudspeakers, which will reproduce both channels the same identical signal which in this will create a monophonic signal in the center. It, it's a fake, obviously, because the, the two loudspeakers have to be perfectly aligned, otherwise you're gonna have some issues with that. But if that works out, you'll have a decent, I would say even a great monophonic reproduction. But how do we do that? I mean, at, le at least we have to introduce one, at one or two aspects in order to, to achieve that. Well, the best solution, talking about vinyl, is to have if you have a detachable head shell, like my Technics have, has, is a monophonic cartridge. Because otherwise, you're gonna have some issues. If you don't wanna do that, there is a solution. You can buy a couple of these in order to put the stereo signal. It gets joined here. You need, you need a female to female connector. Another Y cable on the other on the side, which will then deliver the signal on two channels, but the same identical uh, signal on both channels to the preamp and then to the receiver and then to the loudspeakers. That's that's also a good solution, but you always have to take this on, off. You go, you're gonna go crazy. I mean, you're never gonna put on your mono records at that point. I think the best is, or you can have another turntable. A lot of people do that. You can grab, uh, this is a Denon 102 um, excellent cartridge which doesn't cost an arm and a leg and delivers an excellent monophonic uh, typology of uh, signal. There's also I know an Audio-Technica cartridge which is fantastic. So we have some solutions in this sense but obviously uh, we have to work on it in order to achieve uh, um, the proper setting and as I said these are two solutions. Another solution which a lot of people are using is a switch. You can just insert in your chain a switch which will change from stereo to mono the signal. It's an interruption of the signal. I'm, again, I'm kind of against that, but I mean, if you can, you can try it out and see if the signal degradates or not. If it doesn't, it, you're set, you're done. That's fantastic. Or you can look for a receiver and or a preamp which has a mono stereo switch. That will do the trick well okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video please leave your comments here below thumbs up or thumbs down if you liked or you didn't like this video keep on following me subscribe hit that little bell to have the notifications of new videos and hope to see you soon bye guys